Welcome to the next lesson of the network city model. In this part, we look into the possibility to apply the simulation to any kind of self-generated spatial configuration. Um, I will illustrate this uh, with our basic, uh, with an, an example model. Please open the O3 underlying generative urban development model. And what you see is um, this definition. I added again at the top left side the plugins that you need. It's as with the last model, the human plugin, the decoding spaces plugin, which is provided below the video for download, and the Anemone plugin and the Meta Hopper um, optional. If you zoom out, we have here this overview. Um, just want to explain the different areas briefly. So that's on the, to on, on, the, on the left side, that's the group that generates the geometry. In my case, that's this basic um, street network. The middle part is the analysis of the distances. So that's what we have seen in the last lesson. I will not say something about this part again, because that's exactly the same as you already know. I've just rearranged a few of the components, but this one here is the distance tree output and the rest just computes the shortest paths between my self-generated blocks. Then this um, bubble or this cloud group here, that's again the simulation model, nothing changed here as well. I just used the same logic as we've already used for the grid city model, so you know everything here. And at the right side I added a few components to generate buildings based on the outcome from my model. So let's look through the possibilities step by step. So please go to the first area, the initial geometry. And what I want to do is I deactivate this input for the rest of my um, definition just want to show you what we can do in the beginning. So this um, street network, that's a self-generated network by um, basically by the street network synthesis component. This comes from the decoding spaces toolbox. If you hold the alt GR um, key and press the left mouse button on the component, you find um, where it comes from. So that's this component, place it below here. And this has a few interesting inputs and gives you the great possibility to create street networks with some basic properties just on the fly. I've shown you the basic idea of this component. So you need a border geometry, which have to be constructed out of line segments. For example, you can use a rectangle or what I've used here is a polygon you cannot use a circle because a circle is not constructed out of line segments, but you can use a polygon with many, many small line segments. Anyway, what you can do now is to feed in this um, border geometry just by reference the geometry set on curve on the B um, input variable, right mouse click on it, set on curve and select the rectangle. And what you see, it generates automatically uh, basic network, street network geometry for you. It's controlled by a random seed value. This has to do with the internal data structure. Um, if I feed in this value, you see it just generates something else um, because I used a different random seed, some starting point for my random number generator. Another very interesting input is the initial streets. So this allows you to define the street segments um, in the environment where your self-generated network should connect to. So let's say I have here something and I have an important area in my site here. And now I can reference these initial lines with set multiple curves for the initial street segments. And then I just select them 
um, step by step, press enter. And you see um, the nice thing is now um, the network is generated based on the initial geometry. And if you move around these lines, you see it automatically adapts and generates a new geometry to the new position of your line segments that are used for the initial segments. You can also generate the minimum length and maximum length of the lines that are generated, the distances between nodes and the random angles. So if you reduce this value, then it becomes more orthogonal. And the tree depth, that's a parameter that controls the size of your network, but that's um, needed for different applications. So be careful with values above 10, then your script may become uh, relatively slow. Okay, um, so you see I've generated here this, or I used the circle as an initial geometry and used this to generate my initial line on the street network. And that's the same <coughs> as we've seen in the last lesson. We've, in the last lesson, we just cut out a part of the city of Weimar. And here I generate my street network on my own. So you can use any method to generate a street network also from the parametric urban design course. And then you feed it into the network smooth component. Again, that's a component from the decoding spaces toolbox, which just pre-processes the geometry that you can feed it into this component, the curve here, which is then the input to my distance computation. Um, and turn off the preview. You see, I've computed the distances in my circle city here um, based on the real distances in the network, what we've looked at in the last lesson. So that's happening in the screen box. We will skip it. And now in the in this part here, I have my simulation. If I turn on the preview, then you see the familiar setup here, the initial loop or the, the iteration value is set to zero. Let's run it for 25 iterations. And uh, sorry, just turn off the component that is doing something with the output. So if you run the simulation now for 25 iterations, for example, you see the simulation is based on the same logic as you know it from the grid city. It just uses these plots and it generates this typical pattern um, where people want to be familiar to other people, but you can change the logic in these script components. And you see the distribution graph and all the things that you already know. The interesting part is, if we go back um, with this loop to zero, that we can now use the outcome of this simulation as an input for the next step. This um, can be considered as a kind of a potential for a plot to be built. So if the potential, if the pressure on this plot becomes high enough, then a developer will come and build some houses on it. We can have a look at it if we go to the parallel view and run our model again. Then we will see what happens in our model. And now I activated the right part. What we do here is basically we filter the geometry after a small offset to be sure um, that we have some spaces to the street. And then we generate here parcels. And on the parcels, we generate buildings or buildable areas. That's this component. And finally, we generate the buildings itself, which are then extruded and used for the preview. So let's have a look how the whole thing works. We need to go to an iteration, let's say, of 25 again. And if it, run, it runs, and then you see after a while, um, it always happens to parcels with 
a relatively high potential for something, either for workplaces or for residential areas. Our preview we see, I think, the residential or the population density. Um, so here this preview is used with the population distribution, but we could also show a combined value or the workplace distribution. Anyway, so here you see the generated um, urban fabric, including houses. We can change to a rendering view to make it a little bit more beautiful. Um, but the interesting part is how it works. So here we have the C-sharp attractivity component that I've added, where I use the um, values for the population distribution and the work distribution plus the areas values, area value. And what I do is I simply compute the density, which is the population distribution and the workplace distribution. And if this density is above a certain threshold, which is controlled here by this density threshold slider, then the dense areas, that's my list that I will return. And um, I add this plot to an area that is dense enough to be built. And then I use this output. So here that's my list of areas that I considered that they have the potential to be built on as an input for the rest of these tools. And um, there you see I've generated here these white areas. These are the buildable areas in my model. They are Come they, they they come from this um, buildable area module. Also the parcels. If I turn on this preview, here you see I generate individual parcels based on the plot width threshold. So I define the width of a plot to the site where it's developed by the street or connected to a street. This has to have a minimum value, the plot width threshold. Then um, it's not subdivided anymore. If the plot is wide enough, then it's subdivided to smaller ones. That's from where I get this resulting pattern. So we turn off this preview. And then we have the buildings. So these are the green buildings that are generated here. That's a straightforward parametric model. So here you see a lot of control parameters, which are introduced more in the parametric urban design course where you also learn other methods to generate urban fabrics. I've just chosen one example to um, show you how you can use the outcome or the output of your simulation model to control um, steps after the model that allows you to grow a city even if it's um, predefined in terms of the geometry you can still decide where you will grow or where areas will be developed based on the potential of the city. So you can do this also with the street network to add segments step by step and then extend the simulation with it. So I hope this gives you um, some ideas what you can do with the combination of generative um, methods and with the simulation based on the distance measures for a realistic um, urban structure, urban configuration. Putting this together um, allows you to generate structures like these or others that you can generate.